Overhangs are one of the most important design features that you can implement into a home to improve the long-term durability of the structure. While many newer buildings don't have deep overhangs or lack any kind of overhangs at all, overhangs can significantly reduce the risk of water entry at the walls, penetrations, and window and door openings, as overhangs act as an umbrella around the building. You'll notice that many older homes and buildings have employed larger overhangs and other architectural features that protect the walls and shelter windows from concentrations of rainwater. This is in stark contrast to many of the newer homes and buildings that we see being designed and built today, where modern and contemporary architecture has pushed for fewer and fewer overhangs without improving or implementing other critical water management strategies to pick up the slack. If you increase the exposure of the walls to rainwater entry, you can't construct that wall out of the same products and specs as you would a wall that has been properly sheltered. A survey was conducted in British Columbia back in 1996 by Morrison Hirschfeld, an engineering consultant here in the Pacific Northwest, where 46 buildings were analyzed with 72 different wall conditions. The survey found that the buildings with no overhangs had substantially more moisture problems on roughly 90% of the walls. This is pretty obvious considering that those walls received a lot more exposure to rainwater penetration. On the other hand, buildings that had a 12-inch overhang or less experienced moisture issues on only about 60 percent of the walls, which means that even a shallow overhang can make a difference. Now here's the kicker. The buildings that had over a 24 inch overhang only had issues with about 25 percent of the walls, demonstrating that there's a distinct relationship between the size of the overhang and water entry. Again, this sounds fairly obvious when you break it down like this, but there are so many new buildings that are being constructed without overhangs and without taking the necessary measures to reduce risk of water entry. It's entirely possible to design a building without overhangs, but the margin for error is is extremely low. We also have to keep in mind the relationship between the depth of the overhang and the height of the wall. Taller walls are more prone to water exposure, which require much larger overhangs than a single story wall. Designing a roof with sizable overhangs provides well needed redundancy to the building, as it's more difficult for water to enter at the top of windows and doors. The majority of window leaks occur at the head and end up at the sill. However, if the window head is sheltered underneath an overhang, the chances of water entry are dramatically reduced, and sometimes impossible if the overhang extends far past the height of the window. As a general rule, a 24 inch overhang should be provided for a roof if you want to reduce your risk of future problems. However, the closer you can get the windows to the top of the wall, the less of an overhang will be needed. The minimum recommended ratio between the height of the window head and the horizontal depth of the overhang is 1 to 1, meaning that if the distance between the top of the window and the bottom of the overhang is, let's say, 3 feet, the minimum depth of the overhang should also be 3 feet. However, a ratio of 1 to 1.5 is even better since this will protect the top of the windows and door openings from diagonal diagonal wind-driven rain. However, not all architects, designers, or clients are huge fans of overhangs, especially those who are trying to achieve a modern or contemporary aesthetic. As I said, there are ways to make shallow or no overhangs work, but they have to be designed differently and with different components such as self-adhered or fluid-applied weather-resistive barriers and fluid-applied flashing products, as the extreme exposure to precipitation and weathering warrants the use of products that can form a monolithic water and air barrier. Taped house wrap just isn't going to cut it if you want the wall to last a long time. A simple 8th inch code minimum drainage plane is also not going to be sufficient in buildings with no overhangs. We need a ventilated rain screen for our claddings in order to provide convective drying and pressure balancing to reduce the risk of water entry. We don't want water to be held in tension against the building, and we want the water that finds a path behind the cladding to be able to drain and dry out very quickly. We know water is going to get past the cladding, we want to get rid of it before it can accumulate. The window heads must have a drip cap flashing that's flashed and integrated back to the weather resistive barrier in order to help kick out any water that enters at this location as we lose the benefits of the overhang. This is non-negotiable when it comes to these types of high exposure building conditions. Expect water to get inside and provide a path for it to drain and dry out. Overhangs also help to reduce heat gain by providing shade from direct sunlight. In hot climates or climates that experience warm summers, this can have a massive impact on the cooling loads of the building, thermal comfort, and overall energy efficiency. Providing very large, deep overhangs in hot climates to shade the walls can help to reduce radiant heat transfer and conduction through the studs and other conductive components that have not been thermally broken. Now, there is a practical reason why you may not want an overhang for your roof, apart from the superficial aesthetic reasons. Overhangs increase the potential for uplift damage to occur in zones prone to 
hurricanes and high wind speeds. Incidentally, ballasted flat roofs with parapets are common in these types of climates, as they experience the least amount of wind damage compared to structures with gabled roofs and larger overhangs. Unsheltered sites in coastal climates also tend to experience high wind speeds throughout the year. While it is possible to design for these increased uplift forces, it's often less expensive to use geometry to your advantage. On the other hand, there is an argument to be made that wind-driven rain is more of a concern in some cases. It's a good idea to have these discussions with your structural engineer and your contractor to minimize the risk and maximize the budget. For more information on roof assemblies, head over to Assyri-Designs.com where we have plenty of free building science articles that cover a wide range of topics, including flat roofs, vented and unvented roof assemblies, roof retrofits, insulation strategies for roofs, and so much more. Links will be in the description below. For now, good luck with your projects. Cheers.